1.6, and we are going to look now at how to work through and how to set up question number four. I'm not going to work it out completely, but I am going to help you set up the equation and get to the point that you can finish it. So what number is not in the domain? Okay, when we look at the numbers that are not in the domain, we only concern ourselves with these denominators. We don't worry about the numerators at all. So when we find the numbers that are not in the domain, we don't care at all about the top half of these fractions. All we care about is the denominator, the bottom half, and all we care about is where there's an x. So the first fraction, there's a 7. There's not an x with it, so we have nothing to work with there. The second equation, though, what's in its denominator? And its denominator is an x. So that tells me, since we've got x here, that tells me then that one equation is going to be x equals 0. So what number is not in the domain? 0. 0 is the only number that is not in the domain. Right? So there's your first part. Because if I plug in 0 here, see that's going to give you 0 down below. We don't have to worry about the 7 because there's no x with it. It's just the number 7. Now, we could multiply and we could clear out the fractions, but we can also simply, when there's a fraction equaling another fraction, is remember, we can cross multiply. When there's a fraction equaling another fraction, we can cross multiply. So multiplying, that gives you x times x plus 17 equals 7 times 4x minus 4. Now I think you can finish it from there, right? So the number that's not in the domain, the number we cannot have as, as a solution, is going to be 0. So if you get a 0, that tells you then that you have no solution. Any other number will be fine, but you cannot have 0. So we cross multiplied, and that's another technique that we can use in some cases cross multiply declared our fractions and now you're going to have to distribute and you're going to have to solve the resulting polynomial. We've covered all the others as far as these rational equations. Now we're going to talk about square roots. And when we talk about these square root equations, these are going to be done kind of how we did the ones that had a square. We isolated that square and we took a square root. Well, in this case, when we work with square roots, we do the opposite. We isolate the square root and we square. So step number one is isolate the square root. Step number two is you have to square both sides. Step number three is you solve whatever's left over. And then finally, step number four is you check all solutions back in the original. So you're going to check all the solutions that you get back in the original equation. Plug it back in and check it. You have to check each and every one of them. So I'm going to pick a couple of these for us to work on. And we'll start off with an easy one. 
or easier one, and then we'll look at a harder one. So let's start off with a really easy one here, and let's look at question number 46. So this is going to be on page 165, and we're going to look at question 46. So this is what we've got. And this one's actually pretty easy to work through. Now when we look at these, let's go through our steps. We need to get the square root by itself. Then we square both sides. Then we solve whatever's left over. And then we check our, all of our solutions. So I'm going to go ahead and move this square root over. So I'm going to add it. That way the square root stays positive because we want it to be positive. I'm going to move that over, and I'm going to rewrite it on the left. So now we've got the square root of 3x plus 18 equals x. Right? We just moved it over, and then we switched it around. And that was step one. Step one was we isolated that square root. So we got that square root by itself. Now, how do we get rid of a square root? Well, we get rid of a square root by squaring. So we work in terms of opposites, so we square. We don't have a plus or minus. That's only when you take a square root. We're squaring, so we don't have plus or minus. Now, what happens when we square a square root? Well, again, we look in terms of opposites, and the opposite of a square is a square root. So these cancel out, and that gives you 3x plus 18. Okay, so that's 3x plus 18, because a square and a square root, they go away. And then what about the right-hand side? Well, x, when we square it, becomes x squared. Now we've got something we can work with. We're almost done. How are we going to handle this? Well, squares are all gone. Now, or square roots are all gone. So now we're at this. This is a polynomial. What do we need to do? We need to set it equal to what? When we solve these, we set them equal to 0. Yep, someone said it, I think. So we're going to move that 3x over and move that 18 over. And now we're left with x squared minus 3x minus 18 equals 0. And now we take our first times the last, and 1 times a negative 18 is a negative 18. We look at the sign in the middle, and the sign in the middle is negative. And what two numbers multiply together to give me 18, subtract from each other to give me six, sorry, to give me three in the middle. What two numbers will multiply together to give me 18, subtract to give me three? Anyone know what those numbers might be? Okay, and middle's negative, so we need a minus six, and we need a positive 3 number. So that factors then into x minus 6, x plus 3 equals 0. We've got a lot of these. Square root ones, I think you'll find it to be easier. I think they're a little bit easier than the, than the, uh, rational ones we just did a moment ago. I think these are a little bit easier actually. So what would my two possible solutions be? Well, 
Well, we've done enough of these by possible solutions. We're going to switch our signs. Possible solutions are going to be 6 and a negative 3. Okay. As x minus 6 equals 0, move it over, gives you that 6. x plus 3 equals 0, move it over, gives you that minus 3. Now, what do we need to do from here? We need to check them. And we check them back in the original. We check each one back in the original. So we're going to start by checking out x equals 6. And the original is x minus the square root 3x plus 18 equals 0. And we're going to check that, that 6. We're going to check the 6 first, then we'll check the negative 3. And all we need to do when we check these is make sure the sides match up. They have to be the same. So 3 times 6 is 18. 18 and 18 is a 36. And then what do we know about the square root of 36? Does so anyone remember what the square root of 36 is? Square root of 36 is a 6, right? And we've got 6 minus 6. Does that equal 0? Yes, it does. So x equals 6 works. Most of the time, but not always, one solution will work, one won't. But they can sometimes both work, and sometimes neither one of them can work. So you always, always have to check them both. So we got one of them. Now let's check the negative 3. And we're going to plug that negative 3 in. And 3 times a negative 3 is a negative 9. And negative 9 plus 18 is a 9. And square root of 9 is 3. But this one's not going to work. Why not? Because 3 minus 3, or sorry, minus 3 minus 3 is a minus 6, which is not equal to 0. So x equals a negative 3 does not work. So the only solution that we have then is going to be x equals 6. The negative 3 won't work because the negative 3 gives you a negative 6, which does not equal 0. So let's do one more of these, and then we'll talk about different roots, and they're actually easier. Let's do one more. Let me find one that's like what you're going to see in your homework here. How about 48? So this is what we've got right here so far. Now we already have this square isolated. So that square was already isolated. Or sorry, the square root was. So that square root's already been isolated. Now we always think in terms of, of opposites. So how do we get rid of a square? Use a square root. How do we get rid of a square root? We square it. Now, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. This may entail foiling. Okay, this one's going to make us foil. On the left-hand side, the square and the square root, they cancel. And that simply leaves you with 4x plus 13. On the right-hand side, we've got 2x minus 1 quantity squared. Well, that is 2x minus 1. 2x minus 1. And we're going to FOIL it. I 
and you can always draw the arrows if you need to to see how we foil. Well, when we foil, we have 2x, 2x, that makes it a 4x squared. We have 2x times a negative 1, so that's a minus 2x. Negative 1 times 2x, that's another minus 2x. Negative 1 and negative 1 makes it positive 1, and that then leaves you with 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. Now we can finish this, and we can finish this by setting it equal to zero. So we're going to move that 4x over, and we're going to move that 13 over as well. Nothing new. This is what we've done numerous times. So now that gives you a 4x squared minus 8x minus 12 equals zero. And I will tell you that all of these are going to factor out very, very nicely. So they're not difficult to factor. We're not going to have to do grouping on this one because when we look at our numbers, we have a 4, we have an 8, and we have a 12. 4, 8, and 12 have what in common? What numbers in common with the 4, 8, and 12? They have a 4 in common, right? So let's go ahead and just get rid of that 4. So divide everything by that 4. That's going to make our life a lot easier. And that leaves me then with x squared minus 2x and minus 3 equals 0. Now we can factor. First times the last is a minus 3. And so what two numbers make it work here? Should be pretty easy to do. Anyone know the two numbers? Okay, well, yep, someone said it. Yep, minus 3 and a 1. So jumping to our factors, that's x minus 3, x plus 1. And x minus 3 equals 0. That gives you x equals 3, possible solution x plus 1 equals 0, x equals a negative 1 as a possible solution. Okay, now, these I said again were possible solutions. So how do we check and get the to see if they are the actual solution? Well, we plug them back in. So we're going to have to check each one of these back in the original. And we plug it in, so we plug in that 3. And 4 times 3 is 12. 12 plus 13 makes it 25. The other side is a 6 minus 1. Square root of 25 is a 5. 6 minus 1 is also a 5. So these match up. So we have x equals 3. as our answer. One of them. We always though have to check both, so x equals 3 works. Let's check negative 1. And don't just think that it's negative and it's not going to work. You have to check them both. There's what we're going to check it in. Okay, we're going to plug our negative 1 in. And 4 times negative 1, well, that's a negative 4. 
and negative 4 plus 13 is a 9. So left-hand side comes out to be 9. And the right-hand side is 2 times negative 1. That's a minus 2 and a minus 1. That makes it a minus 3. Now, this is not going to work because 3 definitely does not equal a negative 3. So x equals negative 1 does not work. So we got two possible solutions, and of the two possible solutions, the only one that works is 3. So the answer then is x equals 3. That's it. That's your entire answer. Let's look at a couple more questions that involve us a root. And these are actually easier. These are actually quite a bit easier than some of the others. Now when we talk about a square, a square root cancels a square. So a square cancels a square root. What about a cube? Well, a cube cancels a cube root. Now, what's a cube root look like? That. So a cube is going to cancel a cube root. The fourth power cancels a fourth root. And a fifth power cancels a fifth root, and so on. Now, whatever the index is, and these are called the index here, you do the opposite. So if it's a cube, if it's a 3 here, then we cube both sides. It's a cube root. If it's a fourth root, we take both sides to the fourth power. If it's a fifth root, we take both sides to the fifth power. These are very simple. All you have to do is use the correct root. So I'll just make one up here for us to look at. And again, we'll do two of these. We'll do two different roots. And you don't even have to check these. Okay, you're not, you're not really going to have to check these. These will come out nice and easy. So let's say I give you this to solve. Now the takeaway here is to make sure we know what power to use. So what power are we going to use? All right, this is a cube root, so that means we have to cube both sides. And these are very, very simple compared to all of the others. Much, much easier to deal with. So we cube both sides. So when I cube both sides, that gives me 5x plus 1. And what about 4 cubed? Well, just so we know, 4 cubed, if we use our calculator here, because okay, all we're going to do is cube it, 4, and then the caret key, 3. 4 cubed is then 64. And this is about as easy as they become because we want to solve this. So what do we do? No factorings involved because this is simply a 5x. So all we have to do is move that 1 over. And that gives you then 5x equals 63. We divide by our 5, and then there's our solution. Our solution is now x equals 63 over 5. That's it. We'll do one more of these. 
Then we'll take a break, come back, and we should be able to finish up this section and maybe start a little bit of the next one. Once we hit chapter two, it's going to go a lot faster. And, and I don't have a problem working through and taking a lot of time in this chapter because these are the fundamentals that you'll need if you go on and take another math course. More than anything else, we'll cover all the other topics, but we can go through them a lot faster. But you have to have a really, really good grasp of the concepts. What is chapter two? Graphing. Okay. So it's lines. Um, we do introduce some nonlinear things to so some different curves but it won't take nearly as long to go through. We can do two or three sections every day in there and not have a trouble doing that. Really? Because it's a lot faster. And a lot of it is what you've done before. Like the first three chapters, or the first three sections in chapter two are points, lines, slopes, and something new called circles, which that's easy enough. They're not difficult at all. Then we get to some nonlinear ones, and those aren't difficult. Those are pretty easy to do too. And so chapter two goes a lot faster, like half or even less the amount of time from chapter one. And then we look a little bit out of chapter three. Um, and then we look a little bit out of four and five as well. Four and five are logarithms and systems of equations, which those we don't have to cover a lot. We just need to introduce the concepts. So chapter one is where we spend the bulk of our time. And it's needed because if you go on and you take a calculus course, or statistics or anything else, solving equations is more important than any other concept. So let's look at one more of these and let's make this one a fifth root. So let's go ahead and solve this one. What type of root is it? It's a fifth root. What undoes a fifth root? We use a fifth power. So the fifth root and the fifth power, those cancel, and that leaves you with a 2x minus 3. What about 2 to the fifth power? All right, well, 2 to the fifth power is 2, and we use our caret key, which just so you know, the caret key is right here. So we use a 2, caret key, 5, hit equals, and that gives us then a 32. Not much at all to this one. We're going to go ahead and finish it. So what do we need to do? Yep, we're going to go ahead and add 3 to each side. So 2x then equals a 32 plus 3. That makes it a 35. We'll divide by our 2. And what's our only solution? x equals then 35 over 2. Yep, not that difficult at all. We've got a, I, I want to do one more quick concept before we take a short break. This one won't be difficult to work through either. And we're going to look at, at how to work with these exponents. So this one involves an exponent that's a fraction. So these are going to be rational or fractional exponents. Okay, I'll try to pick one. Yep, and these are pretty much the same. There's only two questions like these in your homework. And so I'll pick one out of the review that's very, very similar. Because I tried to make sure I didn't give you a whole bunch of really, really difficult ones. So these are our two easy ones. And they're pretty much like question 85.
And I think we can get by probably with just one of these because they're not difficult. And the one in your homework is very, very similar to what we're doing here. Just different numbers is all. And question three is very similar to eight as well because this is going to be like eight and three in your homework. Now, when we solve this, what we need to do is we need to get rid of our fractional powers because we don't want any fractions as a power. So we think about how we would clear our fractions before. What are our fractions? We've got two-thirds and one-third. How can we get rid of the fractions? Well, if we had a two-third and one-third, we'd multiply everything by three, right? But we're not multiplying it by three. We're going to have to take it to the power of three. And when we distribute through, that's going to clear out our exponents. So the 3 and the 3, they cancel. And that leaves you then with an x squared. Right? Because those cancel, that leaves you with an x squared. There. What about the other side? Okay. 2 cubed. Well, what's 2 cubed? 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, which is then 8. So when you cube it, you've got to write it out, and you use your calculator or work it out manually. And so that's going to give you an 8, and those cancel. That gives you with an x to the first or just an x. Very, very simple on these. Now, how do we solve this? Set it to 0. So it would be 8x over. And then what can I factor out of the left-hand side here? What can come out of here? What do these have in common? X. So the X is going to come out, and that's going to leave you with an X minus 8. Equals 0 again. And we are going to have two solutions. And what are they going to be? Well, they are going to be one of them, x equals 0, because we factor that x out here. So that's where that one comes from. And then x minus 8 equals 0, so x equals 8. So our two solutions are going to be 0 and 8. And we do not have to check these. Okay, let's take a short break. We'll come back. We have two more short topics to look at. So let's take a short break, and let's meet back here in about 10 minutes or so.